Motors, Book Your Space. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kibera slums. This is the largest slum in Africa. Well, look, take a look at these homes, you know. This is here, there, you know. This is where the locals live. Um, a single house often accommodates around 10 people. Many are sleeping on the floor. The living conditions are extremely poor. No toilets, you know, no people surviving on less than a dollar a day. Um, look, oh, look, 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 there. You know, that's a uh, group of young people from the slum. Um, they usually spend their days here. Um, Nobody knows what they're up to. They're probably into drugs. Well, anyway, so please be careful. Keep your phone safe in your pockets, right? This is a hot spot for crime. But don't worry, we'll be safe because we're accompanied by a local, or as we call them, a homeboy. Slum tourism, the latest trend in Nairobi is rising. Hotels are offering tourists a glimpse into the ash reality and authentic poverty and in human living conditions. Isn't that a great idea? But what is happening here? Slums are making money out of people suffering. Slum dwellers are being used as exhibits, just like in a human zoo. I remember it like yesterday, when I had to make the first tough decision after high school. My parents could not afford to take me to higher education. And I knew, judging from what had happened to my sisters, I had two options. I stay under the care of my mother, fully waiting for her husband to show up, or do something with my life. At the age of 18, I ran away from home. I remember sitting at the bus, looking through the window, so lost in my thoughts and afraid of the future. But one thing was very clear that going back was not an option. Kibera, the biggest slum in Africa, was my destination. Life in a slum is not easy, and so was Kibera. Is it about the living conditions that you have just seen? The overcrowded shacks that accommodate more than eight people? Or the sewages that run right in front of the shack? Or should I just tell you, the struggles that I had to go through to sustain this kind of life. But it was not that bad at all. Soon I made friends, girls and boys who had faced the same fight as mine. Drug abuse, commercial sex, and crime became a way of life. Life was fun until one day when I escaped arrest during a police raid that led two of my friends to jail. Was this the life I was running away to? Was this the future I wanted for myself? Again, I had to make a decision. I got myself a job as a housemaid outside Kibera. And against my boss's wish, I could sneak to a nearby computer school to learn basic computer skills. And for sure, this became my game changer. Soon, entering better paying jobs, I started saving. And nine years after high school, I was able to join the university for hospitality management. This was my way to escape the slum. But what about the others? Some enroll in trainings provided by other institutions in the slums. But they usually don't stay for long. Most of them drop out. Either they have a problem with the structure, or they feel studying time is wasted time. Why not make money the usual slum way? And for those who want more than training, the hotel industry appears to be a very attractive escape route. And this is for obvious reasons. Growing in a slum means living and eating in very unsafe condition. The dream of working in a hotel with very beautiful beds and clean bathrooms. It sounds like a luring call to the world of wealth. But what about the hotels? They sell it as a win-win. We will give casual jobs to the slums youths who have no skills, and they will get uh, cheap labor during peak season. 
what the youth overlook is the dark side of this engagement. Long working hours with low pay, sexual harassment, toxic working relationship, and a top-down approach by both the management and sometimes the customers. My experience in the hotel management gave me an insight to all this. I later had a chance to work as a trainer in a conventional hospitality training college. This made me understand the gaps that we all face when it comes to preparing the youth to this reality. Two years ago, I started a school training marginalized youth in hospitality and linking them with job opportunities. Our center is in the slum, and here lies the problem. Our beneficiaries are endangered in falling back to their old habits. During a training here at Kantari, I heard a concept transformation that has led to the birth of my new organization, Twajali. Twajali is a Swahili word which means we care. And for sure we care. Not only for providing opportunities to the Islam dwellers, but also the transformation of the hotel industry. We aspire to create a world where marginalized youth from the slums will not just be seen as exhibits promoting poverty tourism, where they are not going to be seen as low job fillers during low peak season, but a world where they will be treated with dignity as potential contributors to a diverse and a resilient community. To achieve this vision, the first step I intend to take is to move the center away from the slum. This will give our trainees another exposure to another way of life. We will also provide holistic training using experiential learning methods. But what do I mean when I say holistic training, experiential learning methods? Let me take you through our curriculum. We will divide our curriculum into six parts. And just like in a candlelight dinner, we will start with the first course, the appetizer. To stimulate the appetite for the course, our beneficiaries will be involved in group activities that will help promote their conflict management and team skills. This will also give them a chance to decide whether they want to stay or not. And now with a stimulated appetite, it is the perfect time to serve the soup. Tojali soup will be something special, specifically made for the trainees. Our beneficiaries using our hotel model will have bad and good experience. Again, giving them a chance to decide, is this something I want to know more? We may all know a salad is not a favorite of everyone, but it is healthy, right? Tojali salad will be about critical thinking and creative action, questioning the status quo, going against the unethical hotel norms. At least by the end of the course, our beneficiaries will understand that it is okay not to be everyone's darling. And so you may wonder, what is our main course? This is the core of our curriculum. Our beneficiary will get a detailed and diverse training when it comes to hospitality and its various aspects. Our main course will also include a apprenticeship that will give the beneficiaries a chance to align to their interest. At the same time, they will learn, they learn as they learn. And now, with a full stomach, what next? Twajali's dessert. Mm. This will be a welcome back from the apprenticeship. Basically, this is our dreamland, an idea factory where the beneficiaries will start sharing. Should I choose the path to employment? Oh, now that I have the tools and the skills, can I just open my wings and fly? Fly as far as they can take me. And I can tell you, amid this, this discussion, you will only wish for one thing. Excusez-moi, madame. Digestif.
the exit plan. Just like coffee after a good meal, our beneficiaries now will be alert and very focused to venture the world. At Tojali, we will not measure success with only the number of beneficiaries who will get jobs in hospitality industry. What is very important to us is how many are able to use the tools and the skills and are confident enough to create a world for themselves. Thank you.